breakfast. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna eat breakfast. Bomb Scott gave me that to diffuse. I have no idea what that is. I'm gonna leave it up to the experts. I'm gonna eat this first, and then it's Bomb Squad time. Good morning, everybody. Today we're gonna to be covering one of the most elite, one of the most dangerous units that we have here at the Miami Police Department, and that is the Bomb Squad. I'm gonna go ahead, bring this back to them and return it. And we're gonna go in and meet the bomb squad right now. What's up, Nick? Hey, how you doing? Good, good. Go ahead, introduce yourself to everyone. How you doing? I'm Detective Robert Rodriguez from the City of Miami Bomb Squad. That's right, it's right there on his shirt. And uh, I believe this belongs to you. Oh, okay. I was a little yes. nervous. Uh, I appreciate you letting me do it, but I got a little bit too nervous. I didn't want to cut the wrong wire. Yeah, it's a battery pack for a wheelchair. Thank you. <laughs> really? That's what you guys give me? <laughs> yeah. Is it okay if I call you Rob? Absolutely. Okay. We're here with Rob at the Bomb Squad Shop Warehouse. What's this thing called? Yeah. It's, it's, we call it the Bomb Shop. It's the uh, Bomb Squad's uh, office. Okay, so we're here at the Bomb Squad's office, and Rob is going to show us around. All right, let's 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 start from the front, because I see this this Ram truck, man. Is that a hammy? <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> yeah, so you guys got a nice truck here. We got the big wheels going on. What do you use this guy for? Uh, this one, we, we mainly use it for utility purposes, like pulling the uh, containment vessels or something of that nature. We have to throw something on the back of the truck. Okay. So you use it to haul around stuff? We use it to haul around stuff. Okay, cool. All right, so you got the Hemi, and who's this guy right here? This is 2301. Uh, we basically use this as a, as a backup uh, bomb response vehicle. Well, who are these guys? These, oh are the, uh, these are my partners. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Steve doing? Lorenzana. How you doing? And Serafino Dornas. Hey, hey. Hawaii. All right. <laughs> these, are, these are the squad members? These are my squad members. All right. Outstanding. And this is our office? That's your office? It's our office. You guys are pretty hardcore. <laughs> we do what we can. <laughs> Come yeah. on in. All right. State of the art? Uh-huh. So, Rob, what are your credentials? How long have you been on? Uh, I've been on 25 years in City Miami Police Department. I've done everything from patrol, I've done investigations, uh, I've been in SIS a long time, and I've been a bomb tech since uh, 2000. 2000, 17 years, or oh, going on 17 years. Um, you got all your fingers? I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about what you do here. All right, so the bomb technicians that are assigned here to the bomb squad, we have several different functions. Uh, our main function, obviously, is to respond to uh, suspicious devices, explosives, uh, in some cases incendiaries, but we also do a lot of presentations. We do training with the training unit. Uh, we assist the, the young officers and the, the veteran officers in uh, keeping up to speed with anything to do with explosives and in our field. Uh, we also investigate uh, bomb threats and we do uh, post-blast uh, investigations with the FBI and in the, with the ATF as well. All right, so let's say I want to give up the vlogging and I want to become a bomb technician. I have zero knowledge in, in this. You know, I know a little bit red wire, blue wire. <laughs> but uh, how long would it take for me to actually get started and to become a certified bomb technician and be out here with you guys? Well, to be a certified bomb technician, uh, first of all, you gotta be selected, you gotta be vetted, you gotta go through all the background stuff, the FBI does all their stuff uh, for you. Assuming that you made it up to that point, uh, you'd get on a waiting list to go to the Hazardous Devices School in, in uh, Huntsville, Alabama, in Redstone Arsenal. Uh, and then from there, once you do go to the school, and usually the waiting list is fairly long, once you do go to the school, it's five weeks full-time at the, at, the, uh, at the arsenal. Uh, once you get your certification as a certified bomb technician, then you come back to us and, and we start working. Uh, you must do certain things to keep up that certification. Uh, you got to do three every three years. You got to go back to a mandatory recertification at Redstone. Uh, we all have to do it uh, a week every three years, and we also keep up our training uh, 16 hours a month, where we do in-house training. All right, sounds good. I think I'll be ready to go. <laughs> all right, Rob, show me the goods. <laughs> so some of our responsibilities here are to train some of our fellow officers and in some cases we do presentations at even in schools and stuff and we like to show some recognition so that people don't you know touch things that they shouldn't that's really what we're teaching more than anything right here you got some examples of, of different kind of fireworks uh, different kind of uh, explosives that are used and sometimes in commercial use 
Is it what they show the officers too? Yes, I, I show the officers this as well. Okay. Um, you know, dead cord, for example, you know, looks like a shine, like a nice, uh, colorful uh, rope, but it's actually a high explosive. Uh, over here, we have some some different types of uh, some different types of, of explosive devices that were that were used in past stuff, and some different examples of things that can happen. Some booby traps and stuff, and, and like for example, the shoe bomber or, or the uh, unibomber. So this is the shoe bomber. This is uh, something similar, yes. Okay, and then you said okay. this is a unibomber. Something similar to what the unibomber was uh, sending at the time that he was doing the uh, okay. the bombings. Uh, and then here we put some some little circuits and stuff and parts that not necessarily are explosive, but they they show that these how small electrical things and and uh, components can be. Okay. Um, and here we have some of the military style explosives, uh, the TNTs, uh, you know, C4, the uh, pipe bombs and and grenades, etc. All right, Rob. So let's go through a day. You get a call about a suspicious device, right. okay, and they need none other than the bomb squad. Right. So you get a call, what do you do? We'll head out, we'll come over here, we regroup, the team will get ready. Uh, we'll usually take uh, EOD-1, which is our primary response vehicle. EOD-1, AKA the big sexy. So EOD-1 carries a lot of our equipment so we can handle any kind of device or a threat that's presented to us. Uh, the, the, the important thing here is that we use the correct type of equipment for the correct, for the correct uh, situation. Uh, when possible, we try to go remotely, okay. uh, you know, so to, to avoid the time on target. By remotely, you mean hands off. Right, right. Whenever possible, we try to maintain uh, the hands-off status. Okay, so you guys, right. no so touching, no touching. You try not to. No not touchy, to. no touchy. Unfortunately, <laughs> okay. unfortunately, a lot of times uh, we may not be able, that may not be an option. Okay. That may not be an option. Depending on the circumstances, where the device is located or whatever, uh, then we may have to go into using some of our other equipment uh, okay. to actually walk up to devices. What? Right. Is this our bomb squad? Uh, that is the what they call the crab, the okay. bomb squad logo. All right. Here's where we drive the robot. In the Seraphim. Are you the robot driver? Yes, I am. All right, sounds good. Let me tell you a little bit about the robot. It's an F6B from Remo Tech. So how heavy is this thing? It's about 300, 350 pounds. This is the guy that you would prefer to go to. Whenever, whenever we can, we try to do remotely as our first option. Okay. You got five different cameras. You got the claw. We've got, uh, we can actually hear and we can speak through the remote. And so it has, it has several different things that allow us to employ some of our senses downrange okay. without being there. All right, so what would you use the, uh, the speak function for? If we needed to speak to someone. <laughs> well, Thanks for clarifying that. <laughs> it, could, it could be in a hostage situation. It could be okay. someone all of a sudden gets in the shot and oh. we, the, the perimeter wasn't uh, I got you, I got you. secure or whatever. Or to speak to the other tech, which is also something that's been used quite often. Okay, I got you. Okay. I think you dropped this. Thank you, man. I've been looking for this everywhere. Can you let go now? Hello. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, so he's going back in the home. Yep. Obviously, this guy is the one that you guys would like to use, right? This would be our first option is to do some kind of a remote technique. This is obviously one of the better ones. Okay. So we will choose to use this whenever possible. Okay. And if you can't use it, Something goes wrong, something, uh, for some reason, we can't go remotely, we have to walk down range, then we don 
DUD nine bombs. Wait a minute. I've seen this guy somewhere. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so wait a minute, he's not, Resting. this is not only used for the running man challenge, this is actually used for something? This is actually a very important tool. Wow, all right. Talk to me, what, what, right. what do we got here? This is basically the, the bomb suit together, uh, weighs uh, anywhere from about 75 pounds to about 80 pounds. Uh, the helmet weighs about 15 pounds, and it's a very thick and cumbersome item. Hmm. Uh, it's made out of Kevlar and Nomax. Uh, and all these fibers are what can protect us from some of the heat, some of the frag, some of the shrap and stuff, uh, and disperses some of the blast pressure. Okay. Some. Some of it. Some. Can you give me one of the heaviest suits you put on, more or less? Uh, over, it's over 80 pounds. Over Probably 80 pounds. Be, yeah, closer, closer to 90. And then when you start to, you sweat a lot and everything else, and you use these suits, so they tend to get heavier along, along the way. <laughs> so. Man, but that's uh, the way I'm thinking is like, you got this heavy suit, but your movements have to be so precise. So you yeah. must be kind of fit, man. It's, you, you have to, it's, it's a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of practice. It's a lot of, um, you know, practicing your dexterity and knowing how to move around in the suit yeah. is, is a very important thing. It's just extremely important it's when very it important comes thing. to this, uh, come to this practice. Now, so we got our, our suit. A robot, okay. Sure. We got the devices. You're out there. You grabbed it. Now what? Well, we have a lot of different ways to disrupt uh, to disrupt uh, different packages and open packages up and take them apart. Uh, one of them would be our, our pan disruptor, similar to what is on the uh, robot. Okay. Uh, it's basically a cannon, and we do different techniques for different items. Okay. So it's not like uh, in the movies where you put it in a garbage can. You close the lid and say, fire the hole! <laughs> no, no, not always like that, no. <laughs> uh, we, have, we have several different techniques. Right here, we're touching just a few things. Okay, uh, so what primarily do you use with this? Uh, it, could be, it could be a lot of different things, but uh, one of which, uh, a lot of times we'll use water, or we use all kinds of other things. So the, thing that, the right so the things that go, when we hear you guys go out there and hear, boom, that's, a, that's water? Sometimes, yes. Oh, it depends. Wow. It's actually the, the probably that the shits the water out. Oh, okay. It's uh, whatever we use to make the water go. Oh, okay. And water is used a lot of times because water it can't be squeezed. Okay. And it has some good properties to it, like it doesn't have the friction and everything. So, cool. Way to go. So let's go on to this stuff over here. These are some of our containment vessels. <laughs> Pretty much, that's a really old containment vessel. Okay. Uh, Throwback. Throwback. Real, real old. Uh, you'll probably end up in a museum soon. That's a TBT <laughs> right there. And this is a single vent okay. containment vessel. And this is a completely encapsulated total containment vessel. Let's go into the... So it's like a big giant sphere. So tell me, what do we use these guys for? So the containment vessels, uh, a lot of times, is if we absolutely have to move something that we deem suspicious or explosive, right. we can use these to transport them from one place to the other to, to preserve life and property and everything else in case it actually does go off. Okay, so you, these are just transport uh, well, vessels, I guess? Right. And then you move them to another location. They're transport vessels for, for a certain amount of explosives. Okay, cool. All right, so what's gonna happen over here? All right, so we're gonna set up a little demonstration for you. We're gonna deploy one of our other techniques. We don't get into a lot of specific details and stuff. Because uh, for obvious reasons, right. we're gonna de deploy another type of water shot for mm -hmm. you guys just to, uh, to give you a little demonstration. All right, sounds good. All right, so what are we about to do? So before this this particular uh, demonstration, right, we're gonna yell out three fire in the holes to let everybody know that they may hear a slight explosion okay. or a loud sound. Right. So we're gonna do a fire in the hole this way, a fire in the hole this way, a fire in the hole that way. All right. That way. So go ahead, Nick. You can go ahead and have the honor. I'm going right. this way, this way, this way. That's it. All right, here we go. Manly voice now. Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Grab this thing. Oh, okay. Now, press that button. Okay. One, one finger, press it. Boom! Press it, press All right, what happens? Press it. Hold it down. All right. I heard a, I heard a, okay. uh, like an electronic you see that? You noise. See, yes. You see that red, red light? Yes, sir. Okay, that light's on. Yes, sir. You're ready, good to go. All right. Press this button to discharge. All right, but why are these guys walking away? I don't know. Go ahead. All right. Wow!
it okay if I buy one of these for 4th of July? <laughs> Man, we totally missed the opportunity to sign off. I didn't even think about it. Should have said, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. <gasps> okay. You can see what happened. Okay. The force of the water, what it did. That was just water? That's just water. Wow. With a very little amount of explosive. Come over here. This was left of the backpack. This bottle was inside the backpack. Ripped it to shred. Nice. Okay. The backpack, two halves, all the stuff that was in there, just fills it out. This is what we call a general disruption. Okay. Okay. And that's what everybody hears. That was very loud. Your yeah. kid's gonna be mad that you used their book bag. Slightly. So. <laughs> You can still use it. Yeah, to get him another one. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can also put out there that we're looking for donations. Whoa, go ahead, plug. We're, you, we're looking for any schools that have any leftover book bags that would like to donate it to us to use as a training aid. Okay. We would appreciate it. All right, guys. Just a little bit about the, what the Bomb Squad does. Appreciate you guys. And uh, we're going to be off to lunch. So you guys, don't forget to like share and subscribe on youtube man they nailed it you guys are the bomb you guys are the bomb <laughs>